All right, so I actually, in a feat of marketing, I started off with the tagline, what's the matter with cancer, right? That's how some of you might have heard about it or got here. It's like, what's the matter with cancer? So I first wanted to say, before I go into what's the matter with cancer, I want to refresh your memory. For those who are visiting the Zodiac Lounge for the first time, you may or may not know this. And those of you who have been here, you definitely know this. Now, how many signs of the Zodiac, for those who are veterans, do you have in you? All of them. We astrologers have done you an injustice in having you think that you are only one sign. Now, for those of you who read horoscope columns, and I have written one up until recently, well, I still write one, um, you will look at them and you'll say like, yo, I'm a son of Scorpio, ho, son of Pisces, ho, son of Cancer, ho. And the fact of the matter is, you can read all of the horoscopes and find some resonance, but one or, or several signs will have more resonance for you. So that's the idea. And it also depends on the writer of same set horoscopes. But you have all of them in you in terms of emphasis, right? And then it, some are more emphasized than others. So we're talking about when cancer is greatly emphasized. So let's go back. Because what the zodiac is, many think the zodiac is one thing that it may not be. The zodiac is the story of God becoming during the year. It is the story of the divinity revealing itself, one way of looking at it, during the course of the year. So let's go back. Let's even go back very quickly to Pisces. So Pisces represents coming from the depths of the sea what's inchoate, what's kind of not gathered together, kind of in disparate places and points, and then gets crystallized in identity in Aries. So the idea of being and becoming a particular kind of person gets crystallized from the dynamic force of Pisces. And then from Aries, that cools and goes into the sensuality of Earth and the solidity and solidity of Earth. And from Taurus and that solidity, you want diversity. And so we go between the dynamic of the mind and the dynamic of the heart to find some kind of resolution in order to get away from what's just stolen and solid and prodding along into the air and the freshness and the dynamism of Gemini. So now we move from Gemini and that dynamism and crystallize it into cancer. And cancer is the way by which we have the materialization of nearly everything that we kind of know on the planet. So what's the matter with cancer? I can tell you succinctly. All matter, in some sense, comes through cancer. Now, this is actually esoteric astrology. Esoteric astrology makes the idea that the gateway of souls is through cancer. Now, why would that be? Well, let's go back in terms of just the, the, the analogy or the metaphor. Cancer deals with the ocean. It has a crab as its symbol. Now, before y'all go on like the jokes about it and the crab and blah, 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 right? It's not literally the crab, and I'll get to that in a little bit more. And I am way off the camera. I'm so sorry, camera. I am so sorry. The camera must have been like, this thing goes really off the camera. Where you at? Where you at? I hear him, but he's not there, so I'm sorry. I'm new to this. Anyway, getting back to the idea in terms of the crab, it's not just so much about the crab, but being in the ocean. Now, why is that important? Because it's from the ocean that we understand now scientifically, most of a life as we know it has evolved. Now, why is that important? That's your root, that's the beginning, that's the origin. That's the sense of where things come into material form. But there's another thing to know about material form and matter. Matter comes from the root word, mater, in terms of Latin, which is mother. The idea of mother, when you say my alma mater, alma mater literally means, translated, nurturing mother. The mother that nurtures us. 
So cancer represents not necessarily, don't go to any cancer and be like, Mom, because they hate that shit. But the idea of cancer represents the foundation by which you are nurtured and have your life. It represents how we grow, how we experience the dimension of growth. Now, that even goes to the play on the words, cancer. Now, this happened to me just today. I mentioned to someone, I said um, something about cancer. And she said, like, I have cancer? No. Right? Because that's the joke. Whenever you want to, like, shade the cancer, it'd be like, well, you know, you have the same name as a disease, so what should I expect? Maybe I'm just a Scorpio. I'm just mean sometimes. Anyway, some people have said that. That's not true. But what is related is that cancer, the disease, and cancer, the sign, share the same root related to the crab. And cancer was believed to be a, a disease that grows, here's that word, grow, and it moves sideways in the body like a crab. So it was perceived to be growths that get hard like the shell of a crab that moves sideways in the body. So that's why cancer, the disease, is related to the idea of the sign. Both deal with growth. Now, cancer is unchecked growth that you don't want in your body, right? But it's dealing with the growth of material form. So what's the matter with cancer? The idea isn't just like materializing matter or, or form. It's something deeper. Now, remember what I said. I said it starts with the ocean. Ocean is where we have the myriad of things, the myriad of life, all these different teeming aspects of life. Now, that also in the human body relates psychologically to the idea of emotions and feelings. Now, you might have noticed from my promotions today that cancer had a stank face, right? And I know I got shade from Rugi about that, and it was fine. It's appropriate. It was appropriate shade. But why did I do it? Because cancer, symbolically, deals with all those myriad emotions that happen beneath the surface. Cancers often will have, by sun sign, moon sign, or rising sign, high emotional intelligence. That doesn't mean they always know how to work that, right? But the business, the business of it is learning how to get better at understanding their emotional makeup and understanding yours. So in order to be able to nurture, support, help other things grow, you have to relate to things on a more subtle level. That's what cancer does. Now, in terms of processing, that happens in very subtle, beneath the surface, maybe as some would say, unconscious ways. So sometimes a cancer might have this putative state face because they're processing things that are happening internally and have nothing to do with you. And you might approach a cancer and they might make a face and be like, oh, so you know, I, I come to you and you like upset? No, my bra is too tight. <laughs> this belt doesn't work. And you're thinking it's about you. Or it could be they're thinking about what I said to my son earlier in the day wasn't the best thing I could have said. So now they're processing and dealing with the raw matter, which raw matter isn't just what happens here. Raw matter always happens in more subtle ways emotionally before it happens in the physical world. So what is the lesson we can learn from cancer? Be true to your feelings. Understand the depth and the origins of where your feelings come from. Stop denying them. Because you can't consciously materialize what you want in this life if you are distant from your feelings. Everything in your life will be a lie. Cancer teaches the truth of what you feel and registering the deep of that, the depth of that feeling so that you can grow. If you do not have true depth in your emotional body, so to speak, in your psychological form, then 
what you build in your physical form, what you build in your economic form, cannot have a solid basis. Cancer is the foundation by which you build your house. Cancer, <laughs> cancer becomes the conduit by which you shape your feelings and gain conscious control of your feelings, your emotions, in order to be more of a complete human being. You know they say get your house in order, get your foundations in order. That's what cancer, as symbolized by the moon, represents. If you don't start by getting your emotional house in order, dealing with your emotional intelligence, then everything else in your life becomes complicated. That's kind of what the foundation is. That's where you start to have true triumph through cancer. And we see this in what happens in the mystery of the seasons. So, I'll give you the live story. So, like I told you, it's the story of God becoming, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, as we're now distant from the sun, the sun appears to rise above the equator and goes toward what we call, you learned in school, the Tropic of Cancer. That's the intersection point for cancer on the zodiac, right? That's summer. That's where we have the idea of growth. It, it rises. Now, Symbolically, going back to the idea of a myth, for example, Jesus' myth, there are two stars that relate to cancer at that particular point when the sun is coming above the horizon. It's called Asinus, the ass. Right? So what famous character, mythological person, rides into a city on an ass? Jesus. He was embodying the idea of cancer in terms of coming low on a foundation in order to rise yourself up. Because once you get in touch with the feelings and the connections with others, then the next step is to be able to build a cohesion, an idea of a self, the idea of a group, so that you can transform that group. So that you can take the heart of what you've learned from connecting to others and make more of it. And when you build up the stoutness of heart, when you take those emotions and you kind of now coalesce them into a vision of yourself and what others can be, you've now transcended out of cancer and into Leo. You become the queen. You become the king. But no king, no queen, all right, in consciousness can do that without being connected to feeling and connecting to the group and the dynamic of others. So... The lesson of cancer that I want to share with you tonight, to leave you with, is to embrace the truth of your emotions and your feelings. It is the nature, especially of Western culture for men, for us to shuttle away ourselves from our feelings and to say like, well, you know, because I've been, I've been guilty of this, I don't need to feel a goddamn thing, I just need to do, right? That's a lie, because you can keep doing it until you're dead. Right? And then for women, we kind of love, we, uh, women are conditioned, right, in many ways, to step into the role of being everybody's mother and nurture. And you don't nurture yourselves. And we do that on planes. They tell you on planes, like, right, the idea of take the oxygen mask for yourself first, and then you can help someone else. But if you're passed out, overcome by disease, overcome by stress, overcome by work, you can't do much for anyone else. So you have to nurture yourself. Before cancer was a crab, it was the scarab from Egypt. It was Kepra. And Kepra was in is a dung beetle. And what it does is it buries its egg in shit. It does. In, in dung, that's why it's called a dung beetle. So what is the true lesson of cancer? The lesson is 
Take the shit that you get around with you, around you. Transform that, right? To nurture yourself. To lift yourself up, to resurrect yourself. And then you can lift up, just as the sun rises above the equator and goes toward cancer, in order to prepare yourself for the next stage, to be covered, the next Zodiac Lounge, for Leo. Thank you.